Is 343 starting to ban people for teabagging in Halo? It's no surprise that gaming industry as a whole has tried their best to reduce the amount of toxicity that can happen online. Anyone who grew up in the Halo 3 Modern Warfare 2 era online gaming know things can be a little toxic. Yeah, f that guy. Oh, f you. As a matter of fact, how about them apples, fat ass? Hey, devil. Yeah. yeah. You. Hey, you better watch out. This, hey, this guy's big into MMA. His name's Armbar. Watch No, the fuck actually, out. I'm not into MMA. Oh, you just into sucking dick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a riot shield! I'm a pussy that use riot shield! Oh, I'm a pussy. What the fuck are you doing? Let me tell you, as someone who lived through this time, it was a social battlefield. And while a lot of it can be extremely toxic and just awful for the experience of gaming as a whole, it does have a certain charm to it if it's playful and fun. And one of the most perfect examples of the playful and fun toxic behavior you can have online is teabagging in Halo. It's something about maybe the character models, the physics behind it all. Just like, it felt like Halo's teabagging was peak teabagging in all kinds of games. Especially if you gave it a little bit of a rapid fire tap. Oh, it was ugh, fantastic. But recent claims online suggest that actually 343 are looking to ban people for teabagging in Halo, which just seems absurd. But I actually saw this going around the internet. I even saw this comment in my recent video as well, which you totally should watch, just saying. Uh, but they even said that also They've started to ban people for teabagging. And I was like, where is this accusation coming from? How is this even possible? Well, it started from popular YouTuber Asticross, who posted this on Twitter saying, the boys and I got banned on Halo Infinite for teabagging, WTF, showcasing that at least one player in your fire team has been banned from playing Halo Infinite, which is really odd to see like, this is like a bannable offense for bagging, which could lead to like toxic behavior, which we have seen toxic behavior be a bannable feature within a lot of games with in-game reporting. But I just find that hard to believe. While it's something that could possibly be tracked, is that really something that's even worth tracking for? Is that something worth banning people over? Especially for how small the population is right now within Halo Infinite. We need all the players we can get. Especially for having such a popular YouTuber as Cross talk about this. A following of just under 900,000 subscribers are mainly known for their Destiny content, but now he's kind of branched out doing a lot of other kind of games as well. But he's touched on Halo and Halo adjacent topics as well. So he's a fan of the franchise. So having someone this important spreading this kind of information people are going to pay attention to it and they certainly did with here on twitter for just this tweet alone you can see that it had over 1.8 million views that means 1.8 million people saw this information going out so they're thinking like wait is it actually something that people get banned for or are they probably just scroll past it and like oh they're banning for this now probably so they can ease off on toxicity within the game well it turns out this looks to actually be false information Big surprise, I know, but this actually doesn't really seem like something that's actually being tracked by 343 as the community manager here actually replied to this tweet after being tagged into it saying, yeah, that's not a thing. A 30 minute timeout is automated and only happens after quitting multiple games in a short amount of time. It's always prefaced by a 10 minute timeout. So that means they were likely quitting before leading into this ban right here. So this is just false information out there. But again, this is something you need to take in consideration when you look into information and news and things that might fit your narrative about what makes a game great or suck or whatever that sometimes people just don't have the full context and it seems like one of the people within their lobby just didn't like playing the game and would quit out probably because he's known for being a destiny player and there's really no banning penalty for leaving games in destiny because it's such a casual game halo's actually one of the few games that actually ban people for quitting in casual matches but the player says one thing and the developers say another thing oftentimes we need to test out to see who is actually correct so let's put my account on the line here and actually see, do you get banned for teabagging in Halo? So for every kill I get in this game, I'm going to go for the bag, all right? Because there actually might be a little bit of a truth behind this as well. 
because there is a way to report players for toxic behavior so possibly the person who for as a, as a blah, 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 because it certainly might be a possibility for as to cross to get banned for toxic behavior i'm gonna run over and just get a little bag anyways which is a very good thing and that there is that ability to ban players for toxic behavior was in video game it's something that definitely needs to be addressed and be a little bit more of a not necessarily a completely safe space for people to engage in gaming but it just needs to be something a little bit lighter for people to just kind of jump in and play or at least give players options for censoring muting other players that's easy to access but also something that's not like detrimental to the gameplay experience right of course it's the hard part is being able to get enough kills to teabag because of well jeez christ the skill based matchmaking is tough right now in this lobby but so far we have one teabag in and well i'm still playing the game here's another teabag here for you right here look at this get that bag in yeah feel it we got another one we're gonna get another one over here as well this is all for science. I'm sorry for doing this, but this is science. Sometimes I'm not proud of the things I need to do for YouTube content. Here's another one. Slide it. Gotta get, gotta get in fast. We got two bags. We gotta get one bag. And we gotta run back over here and get another bag. There we go. Now, I am also playing on my main account. So now people are probably thinking if they actually recognize me. Because I have to do get recognized within the games I play as well. Uh, like, oh, Kevin's just being toxic for teabag. And like, guys, it's like I said, it's for science. Don't be mean to me. I know a lot of people like to cite the old days of like Modern Warfare 2 and Halo 3 lobbies of just being fun kind of toxic behavior in gaming. But I'm glad that there are been coming more and more features for players to avoid these type of experiences. And I would say the more and more I play and maybe the more I get older of playing video games that the less likely I want to deal with that type of toxic behavior. That's also another thing that's like, you see a lot less mics being used online. But I think also that plays in a factor that it's been a lot easier for people to connect online with people, right? There's ways you can actually find communities that you want to actually engage with. But before, the communities you would engage with would have to be through playing the game itself. Nowadays, you have YouTube communities you can find. You can find you can find a lot of people on Discord you can chat with as well. We're going to go for another tea bag here while we uh, talk about this kind of thing and how the expansion of communication within gaming has been very much a thing where I think it's lent itself to less people actually being willing to engage online through just the game itself to chat and talk about things because people just go like, you know what? I'm not going to deal with any kind of toxic behavior, mainly just because, well, most of the times people are just going to be complaining about things. It's not that, that thing really, really want to deal with, you know? I only have so many hours in the day I can actually jump in and play some games. I want to chill, have some fun, relax. And I don't want to hear someone complain about me not performing as well as they would want me to because I'm playing casually and they're sweating in a social match because, well, skill-based matchmaking makes that happen. I'm not totally sure how many tea bags I will be able to get within this singular video. I'll put a tally at the end if you guys are curious how many bags to bands ratio there have been. Well, guys, I made it through the first match here. Banless right now, as you can see, I can still search and play the game right now. So maybe this might be a little bit of a false information thing that's going on right now, which very much could be the case of people just getting into a situation, going off of their emotions and just throwing stuff out online without really thinking about like what that actually could do to the gaming experience as a whole, especially the gaming community, especially with a tweet like that from As It Cross, where getting 1.8 million views and it's just straight up false information. But that's something that definitely plays into the narrative of people trying to clean up the gaming experience, force the people to be less toxic than they really are or letting the natural experience of gaming online really come through. But what are your guys' thoughts on like censorship and detoxifying gaming as a whole? Do you think that needs to be done? Let me know in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to tap like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.